Uh, we're ready. Motion to accept minutes from some date. So moved. January 26th. January 26th. So moved. Second. You okay? Okay. Yeah. Aye. Uh, is there a Gary Stone in the house somewhere? <laughs> oh, Gary, you're up here. Well, um, okay. this is going to be a scams update, right? Scams yeah. update, yeah. Um, I thought Mark Gilmore was going to come tonight. Uh, he may still show up. <clears throat> may give a little more input than I can give, but um, the Board of Oversight for scams is still very interested in moving into the Waitley building uh, but our hands are tight as you know uh, with all the uproar and everything going on uh, <clears throat> we can't do anything until town meetings to find out if the three towns will vote to move to Waitley but we are very interested uh, our director is very interested I don't really know what else to give you for input um, as far as what is we it, can do. There's nothing we can do at this point. So I take it this is a group in Deerfield that's opposed to moving into having scheduled. I only know what I've read in the papers. So. Yeah, so that's a small group I've heard. <clears throat> and are, are they also, besides not wanting to move into Whateley, are they also wanting to disband scams and just have their own EMS? From what I've read in the papers, um, that was kind of like a alternative, you know. If they if they can't get to try to keep it, if they can't keep it in Deerfield, you know, keep the the regional service in Deerfield, then they want to push to pull out of the regional system and try to run it themselves. I don't I don't see how that can happen. Um, we've talked a little bit about it. I mean, if they I think what they need to do is do a lot more research. Right now, it seems like everything is based on misinformation. These people don't have all of the facts. I kind of sympathize with them. As you guys know, I had a hard time losing our ambulance. And I understand where they're coming from, but I didn't have facts to base it on. They do. You know. At the time, all I had was information that it was all speculated and this is promises, this is what we thought we could do, which turned out very well. Um, as far as what they have, it's everything I read about in the paper, all these different things are misinformation. So from the board's point of view, SCEMS is functioning better than our previous arrangement where we had where we weren't it. cooperating, working together. So and, and the data would back that up. And the data would back, so Deerfield, it, some it, people in Deerfield. We have the facts, and, and what I brought up at our last meeting is to have our director put an article in the paper about all the facts, try to get the facts out there, so that when these opponents start talking to different people and try to convert them to keep it in Deerfield, then they will have some facts to base it on. Right now, they don't have anything. All they have is what these opponents are telling them, which is all, you know, I mean, they come up with the idea that it's going to take four minutes longer to get from Waitley to Deerfield Station, you know, only because somebody, one of those opponents drove the distance, had to go through the stop signs, had to, maybe had to wait for a train, I don't know. But, you know, it's the way we, un, we figure it out, it's a lot better system, a lot better location. And it, isn't it fair to say that the average is about seven and a half minute response time right now? 7.10. 7.10, okay, okay. Even if you, it, it, let's, let's give them the benefit of the doubt for a second. If you added four minutes right. to the response time, still better than what you had that's before. still a lot better than what they had before. And again, as we talked about when we were selling this to begin with, time means lives, time means time not spent in the hospital, they can get you home more quickly. Well, it's hard to sell that point, seeing how they've already seen the seven minute response time. Right, oh, I, I get that. You know. This is working. My question for you, Gary, is wouldn't it be helpful to get an estimate 
of the renovation costs that will be, in, I, I, I guess I'm wondering, in strategy, do you go to town meeting saying, do you support this and we'll get you the data later in terms of final costs? And we already know what the, what the, what the rental agreement w would be. Or do you get the cost and say, this is what it's going to cost the three towns you talking about Deerfield alone or all three towns? Each one. Yeah, because we have town meetings coming up in the spring. We're not going to get get it by this spring, obviously. I, I can't imagine unless we just could look for a, a blessing that we're going to move to Waitley and then we'll figure out the cost later. So that means it goes to a special town meeting. And I think that we're, we're well served to go to the special town meetings in each of the three communities sooner rather than later. And I guess I'm wondering, do we have a better chance at really nullifying all their arguments if we go to town meeting with all the information so that we should now just continue to proceed with getting our ducks in a row, getting the final design here, getting the cost here, so that we have a package to present to town meeting rather than uh, this is what we'd like the towns to support in principle. Yeah, I see what you're saying. Um, yeah, I mean, everybody is a little gun shy right now is to, I mean, the board really doesn't want to spend any money on this endeavor until they get the okay to go ahead with it. I mean, we can still come up with our final a plan, you know, a floor plan, stuff like that, but that's kind of peanuts as far as the overall cost. I mean, you know, and to go any further to get an architect or anything, it's going to cost money. Right. Where, and I think that's where they're kind of leaning is why put money into it if it's not going to happen, so. Well, see, I don't think it's not going to happen. I think, I think that it will pass all three towns regardless. It's just a question of which is quicker and a, and a more sure thing to get the, 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 the tremendous people in Deerfield to understand that they're being misled by a very small group of people who didn't want scams to be created to begin with. I, I just don't know the, the answer to that because we've got to move forward. Yeah, I don't know where their position was when it originally came. Because otherwise SKIMS does go away. If we can't figure out how to take these next steps, SKIMS does go away. Because we can't afford to continue to pay the, what we're paying to the South the, the uh, South Deerfield Fire District right now. And we all know that that's going to go up by $18,000 in a year. And if they say that that's not true, then they should read the public document that's called a contract. Well, that is facts. That's <laughs> fact. That's what I mean. Right. The facts need to be out there. And, and right now they're not. And 52% of a big number is more than 52% of a small number. I'm saying the other, the well, other thing they don't really understand is they keep coming up with those numbers. They say, we, we're paying 52% and we're only getting 33% of the vote. Well, that's... There's no relevance there. I mean, it doesn't make any sense whatsoever. They are not paying any more than the other towns. Maybe in the overall, uh, the big dollar amount, they're paying more, but not per call. Right. Per call, they're paying the same as at all three towns. If they had equal you know, what difference would it make? They're paying 52% more, but they're getting 52% yeah. more. As far as uh, one third vote, oh, yeah. what difference would that make? Originally, we voted, all three towns voted to have a three town collaboration, and that's what we have. And it's worth it. And it should be equal amount, e equal people from each town on that board, which it is. And I can't remember a time when we had a, a big vote where we had people, you know, wondering, well, I don't know if I want to vote for that or not. It was always pretty much unanimous on any vote we've done. So one more vote from them, really at this point, is irrelevant as well. And by the way, right, because six to nothing, even if they got one more vote, and let's say that was a dissenting vote, it's then six to one. It's not suddenly, that one person isn't gonna sway the other two people. The two people who represent Deerfield on this board are very smart people who care a tremendous amount about public safety. And it's really a shame that they're being branded as these people who don't care about public safety by the by the naysayers in Deerfield. It's not going to change anything. Fred's right, and, and and so I just I would like to figure out how to move forward as quickly as possible to town meetings, and put 
pressure on the on the naysayers because they will lose the vote if we do a good public outreach effort. That's they what, will lose, just happen. like they lost before. That's what needs to happen. The facts need to be out there for people to see. Well, the, the, I know there's been a lot of, we've always invited anybody who has any complaints or anything, we've always invited them to our Board of Oversight meetings. But one person who does come to a lot of the meetings says that it's never posted in Deerfield office evident I don't know if it's on their website or not but it's it's never posted where anybody can read it and, and for and some you guys, reason you guys should remember the vote that Deerfield took the sense of the resolu the resolution that was a voice vote and there was a call for a vote in the middle of the discussion by scams representatives that was trying to provide all the facts so they cut the debate short they knew they probably didn't have the hand count votes so they asked for a voice vote and no one contested it. no one contested the call for the voice vote hmm. they will lose a hand vote well here's something else they could lose and, and skims could lose and we all could lose we have an empty space in our building that we're paying for and we promised our voters and we were under the impression this was going to happen and now we're sitting with an empty space that's costing the town money. And we've got people who want to occupy that space. Deerfield should know, or the people that are opposing this move should know that it's not going to sit empty forever. Right. They, they're fine with that, though, Paul. So that's not a, that's, that's not Yeah, a, they may be fine, but other people may other not people be may so not fine. Be, you know. I, I, I don't know if our board really was aware of all of what really needed to happen. I, I, I think that the board thought that they could say, okay, we can move wherever we want. But evidently that's not the case. It evidently was in the original agreement saying that it had to go between, before the three towns to make a move. And I don't think we knew that, or we didn't discuss it anyways. We thought, okay, was, we found a place, let's move to it. I, I think but, the standing board should, because should, you guys are all my friends. I think you should be very confident in going to each of the three towns that once the once an information campaign goes out there and is public and is orchestrated, the vote will demonstrate once again that the people of Deerfield support whatever scam whatever decision the, the, the Board of Oversight makes and they will support this move again by about ninety to ten, which is what Deerfield did when it supported scams to begin with. These guys are a minority, they're just loud. Yeah. But, it, but loud people Fred. can yeah. change people's minds if they don't have the facts. Fred. The facts need to be there. It, it's my understanding that Skims is also looking at other locations. We have looked at have, other Okay, locations. but have you informed anybody of that or come up with, with data to show Either it's not cost effective or there's not enough space there to do what you Anybody want. Anybody who's asked about it, we've told them. That was that presented at the meeting. Yeah. yeah. We have looked at a okay, number of places. They looked at putting an addition on the South Deerfield Station, which was probably like $2 million. Yeah. I mean, it was an unbelievable amount of money. But if you're going to if you're going to They had out, somebody in Deerfield who was going to build a place for us, which was a lot of money. But you if you're going to put out facts about the service, how good it is, I guess I would think put out facts about what other alternatives are going to cost. Exactly. Uh, I hear what you're saying, and I guess I'm aware of some of that. I don't think the general public knows unless they tune into all these meetings. And you could tell them it's going to cost you more if you build your own or keep it in, in Deerfield. But I think maybe present them some numbers, some facts. If you stay in Deerfield, this is what it's going to cost for the building. And, yes. and adding, you, you, it's not only the building, because we're talking here remodeling costs. Well, you're not going to buy a building and just move in. You've got to remodel too. So okay. look at the, the complete package of, of, a, of alternate locations. Mm -hmm. Maybe present that to the public and, or public meetings or, or the newspaper That's article. That's exactly saying, what I suggested the last meeting. And what so was the response? They want to do it. They said they're going to do it. next meeting? Um, I think we're going to have one this Thursday. We're supposed to. I haven't gotten a final word on it. But Where's it going to be held? Usually at the Sunland Public Safety Complex. Okay. Oh, okay. Gary, thank you. You are doing. Thanks, Gary.
great service to all three towns and what you're doing. Well, we just said our hands are tied at this point. And we'd love to get it moving, but you know, it, it's very tough to have three ambulances in three locations and the director in a fourth location. It's just nothing, that part of it is not running very efficient at all. The overall mm -hmm. service is running good, but just to get a backup ambulance is, is taking you longer than it normally should. If you have them all in one spot, a second ambulance can be there in a matter of minutes. It's also costing the three towns a lot more money to have three different locations than it would in a central location. And the South Deerfield Fire District cannot provide one central location. Right. As wonderful a building as it is, they cannot provide three different locations. So, I, okay. We need to figure out how to how to get the information out there. I don't think you have a problem in Waitley. I don't think you have a problem in Sunderland. It's it's well, the, the lack the lack of correct information in Deerfield that's right. holding this back. Well, hopefully our next meeting will make that happen. Okay. Good. Thank you. Thanks, Karen. All right. What else, Mark? Next up here is the contract for virtual town hall. I've reviewed it and I just need a signature. Uh, the initial startup cost would be $4,500 as discussed the night Bill was here. $1,500 annual service would be prorated and it would not begin until the website goes live. So, so when will this start? They'll start working on it as soon as we get the contract back to them. How long before it's up and running? That's probably up to us until you guys are happy with the website. It's going to take some time. It, it's going to take a couple months. Oh, yeah, of course. It's actually but I, but I mean, it won't go months. live until you're happy with it, you've seen it, and you're ready. I, I would like to be involved in the design and, and that kind of stuff, having some experience with this. Sure. So, of course. Okay, next. Next up is the Water Merger Committee appointments. Uh, I'm going to request that this be put on hold temporarily. Uh, Fred, you had a conversation with the Water Commissioners? Water, water yeah, Commissioners, yeah. They've invited the Water District in, representatives from the Water District in, to have a conversation about the merger before we appoint a committee, which I think is probably a good idea to make sure everyone's on the same page. Sure. Uh, we have a list of potential committee members who've agreed to be on the committee. So after that meeting happens, which will be at their, uh, what is it, first Tuesday of March, March. we'll go ahead and I'll, I'll put the appointments on your next agenda. Okay. Okay. That's okay. Fine. Uh, aha. Aha. Flag. Flag. Hey, do we have a waiting anthem? Adelia. There's a Waitley song. We have a Waitley anthem. There's a Waitley song. If I sing it, oh, give me the word. I'll make something up. Song, whatever you call it. So, Dominic from the recorder uh, emailed me earlier today and said he was not able to be here. Uh, I'm going to snap a couple pictures of you guys if you don't mind. He is going to write an article about it. Yeah, who's going to hold this one for me? Uh, right. That's cool. Yeah. Oh, it's other on side. the other side, too. Both sides. <laughs> Both sides. Both sides, wow. And we only paid for one, one flag. That's awesome. <coughs> that is awesome. Yeah. The town so we're, gonna, we're going to, do um, we have a poll yet? It's, it's on its way. It was backward, but it's on its way. So one will hang here. We have two flags. One will hang here, and one will go to the state house. That's awesome. So we, we probably got the only green flag in the state house, right? Yeah, sure. Make sure I get a picture of all three of the okay. old flags. That's awesome. There's our a little picture piece of, for the scoop. It's our little piece of Grover's Corners. Yeah. Grover's Corners. Oh, Sesame Street. <laughs> Who's Grover? Can somebody help Paul out, please, with his with his American literature? American literature. I hate to say it, but I studied American literature. Thornton Wilder, our town. Oh, your town. Yeah. 
Okay. I didn't so, read it, actually. At some point soon, we, we need to discuss how our flag is going to get to the State House. So maybe one of our reps. I, I go to Boston a lot, so I'm happy to do it. You missed it last month. You were there. What's that? You missed last month. You were there for the MMA. MMA. I was there for the MMA, yeah. Yeah, yeah but I'll, I'll be in Boston. Actually, I'll be in Boston on the 22nd, the day after I get back, so. Sure. Okay. I mean, the day I'm free in Boston. So it has a pocket for the, the flagpoles that they have there. Who would so I bring it to? I have no idea. Okay, I'll sergeant just wander around with a flag. That's for the sergeant at arms. All the flags. <laughs> They're the guys. Yeah, I'll, I'll find out. I'll find out. I'll, so I'll contact Steve. I will check that off the uh, project list. A dwindling first list. Complete, yes. Well, first or second complete. Right? It depends on how you consider the number. Very efficient team. Okay. okay. Roof repair. Roof repair. Uh, I have a contract for you here. Um, we already discussed this. So I won't go into detail. It's for three thousand nine hundred and sixty dollars for snow guards, trim, uh, potential roof leak ceiling, and fixing all those pipes on the roof. Uh, right. I just need a signature on that so we can get that going. And that check that's attached to it is the deposit check. Good. We're just knocking things off the list. Right and left. And as soon as they get that back, they will um, order what they need to and schedule it based on the letters. Town administrator updates. Town administrator updates. Uh, I'm sure it's a sparse, sparse list. Today. It is. Cell tower update. The RFP publishes tomorrow yeah, yeah. in the central register. Uh, the site visit date that we set is, uh, it's a mandatory site visit, it's February 24th at 10 a.m. The question deadline is set for March 7th at 4.30 p.m., meaning we won't accept questions after that date. Proposals are due the following week on March 14th at 12 noon, and I'll, I will schedule, it's the same day as our uh, special town meeting, but I'll schedule the bid opening for 12.30, so there's a little breathing room. Uh, that same day. Good. So cool. Uh, what day is that again? March 14th. And do they have to go to site visit? To, it's uh, mandatory site mandatory visit. Mandatory site visit. Okay. Yes. Um, so I just wanted to let you know that that will be posted tomorrow and it will also be on our website as of tomorrow morning. Um, quickly, Mill River construction down there has concluded. Wow. I don't know if you've been by there or noticed. Um, Site visit demobilization occurred last week. Um, the plantings and relocation, obviously, of rare species will resume in the spring. Uh, project was over budget by about $5,000, which in the scheme of things really is not a big deal. Uh, well, why was it over budget, though? It, it was over budget because they were, they were removing fill from one part of the channel, from the new channel, fill the old channel and because of compaction because of saturation and whatnot they were short fill so we had to haul fill in um, and I should add a thank you to our highway guys for being willing to haul fill in um, because they were able to do that for us we were able to keep the project moving had it gone over the ten thousand dollars we would have had to put the brakes on the project oh and gone out to bid so so it, it, it was a five thousand dollar overrun and how what was the total cost of the project well, the total cost of the project initially was two hundred ninety four thousand dollars seventy five percent of which was paid for by me so we did over budget for it by about twelve, fifteen thousand dollars, something like that, for uh, as the a event. Contingency. Yeah, exactly. So, in the scheme of things, this was actually not a big deal, as far as I'm concerned. For a three hundred thousand dollar project to come in five thousand dollars over budget, and and I just want to remind you also that the original low bid was three hundred four thousand. So, there was already, and some co agreed to come down to match what MEMA had approved. So, there was already a you know, significant saving there, and we budgeted extra. For so we spent less than we had asked for at town meeting. Exactly. Okay. So we're still on we're still on budget. We're not asking for any more money, but I, there was the additional trucking cost of fill. So um, again, as far as I'm concerned, it was a okay, great, great, successful project. So 
Um, good news. Wow. Oh, yes, yeah. good news. Oh, that's good news. Solid waste. Oh, no, we're not there yet. I'm sorry. No, uh, office renovation plans. I just wanted to let you know that I did speak with uh, George from Jones Witsit. He had a conversation with the building inspector, and we will not be needing a Chapter 34 review, the architectural review for our renovations down on the south side here. Right. Um, so more good news. I'm in the process of getting estimates on some HVAC work in that area. And my plan is uh, to start drafting the RFP as soon as uh, I get the first draft of the FY17 budget completed. So it's on my radar. Okay. Um, so that's moving along. Good. Um, lastly here, since Adelia is still here too, this is a good time. Uh, the Wheatley Historical Society, we had sent them a letter back in December just, you know, kind of laying out the proposal for them uh, renting in the center school. There's a question here in the letter. It says that uh, the historical society would be responsible for the cost of electricity, heat, and elective utilities, and a renter's liability policy. And I just want to ask you for clarification's sake. Are you looking for pol a policy that covers contents or a liability policy from the historical society as a renter? Uh we have a liability policy on the building, right? right? But if we were going to have an event here, you know, if somebody wanted to use this building for an event or town hall or any building, they would typically have a liability policy. And I think that's where that wording came from. You know, a one day liability policy or a weekend policy. But if something happens, l l let's say that the Historical Society has their Memorial Day event. I'm picking something. And something were to happen somebody slipped and sprained their ankle. Uh, just, that would be covered under our... That's what's not clear. Well, we need council's advice on that then. Because I don't know either. I, I, I gotta believe that... Yeah, I'm not sure if it changed when we <clears throat> relocated here. There's a policy, there's an there's a overarching policy on all fields. I mean, if, if, if if anything happens on, on town property, when it's in use by someone we've granted permission to use, it would strike me that that is covered under our liability policy. So why don't I do this? Why don't I get some more clarification from our insurance company? But you're not concerned with contents, right? Well, I assume that's they their, they that's their, their, no, their own policy. It's not been, yeah, I'm not, I mean, that's. It's a liability. That's sort of their, if they're, if they're not going to ensure their contents, then. Yeah, I know that from my little concert experience, we, we insure every event with event insurance. Right. It's just for that day. Right. That's the kind of, so, I, mean, I, I know that, you know, a, a baseball organization like Cal Ripken, while we use town fields, we also carry that's insurance. What, that's what I was getting at, and that's what I'm wondering if that's what they need. But I'll get clarification from our. It's our not very insurance. expensive. I mean, it adds up if you have a lot of events, but for one single event. See, this is not a one event. This is all the time. Oh, right. okay. So yeah. not just yeah. for the. Just one day. Not just for the, all the time. memorial. Okay. So yeah. Find out about both about both yeah. so scenarios, on. the ongoing and the events. Is that clear, Mark? Great. It's like if somebody falls down at the transfer station and sues the town, and we, it's our liability. That's our liability, but that's town function. function. Yeah, but that's town function. It's, it's, the, it's the things that aren't part of ongoing well, town operations. Well, like the snowmobile. The snowmobile club's a good example of that. So they have a meeting and somebody falls in town property and hurts themselves. Are we covered? Or yeah. are they covered? I don't know. We, we should address. find these things We should out. find these out. Yeah. I will find out. Because it's not just the historical site. Yes, yeah. and I can answer you before the next meeting, one way or another. So if you're okay with that. Yeah, okay. I have a question. Um, you mentioned about getting quotes for your HVAC system. Um, would, it, would you be able to do something like that to get costs? What it would cost SCEMS to do whatever needs to be done over there? in that section. I, as far as HVAC goes? As far as the cost, yeah, because I don't know, um, I don't know what has to be done. Once we I have know. the plans. Yeah. Well, you know what the square footage is at this point, yeah. so. 
but they're going to want to know. I would think you could come up with. There might be control issues, like we might want to control them differently, the different spaces, and make modifications to allow for that. Well, you may want I just to, wonder if we could get some kind of a rough estimate from the same guy while he's doing well, that. Well, we probably could, but I we'd have it, to know what you need. I think it was included in the other estimate, or the one they came up with to say the 300,000 or whatever. I thought there was HVAC in there. Because the other thing they were looking at was putting in your own system, not using the, that system. Oh, I. Yeah, it wasn't a way we discussed what was the more prudent way to go. And I don't think there was a resolution, but we said, okay, it, there's one scenario where it's all one system. There's another scenario where it's... Right. I was system. just wondering if, I mean, why you I, got somebody in here, if we could I didn't get, work the get a ballpark cost. Sure. Um, what why wouldn't we ask? So yeah. we could, rather than us hiring somebody to come in, which the board really doesn't want to do at this point until we know if we can move in. Mark, why don't we include that? That way we can start putting some numbers together. That's not a problem. Brodsky, uh, the company that does our servicing here, is going to come and do the estimate. Uh, I was under the impression that you guys were talking about doing split systems in that area, and we were going to, because we did say in the lease negotiations that utilities would be separated. Right. So and it does make it more. But, but ask Grodsky if they're willing to estimate a ballpark estimate for, as Gary puts out, the, the square footage, a separate system, but with that square footage, and I guess there, I get that there are specifics and details that haven't been fleshed out, but at least, at least get some, some I can ask. Some, it's, it's, yeah, it's not going to cost us anyway. Yeah, yeah. So okay. as long as you got the square footage, and you know, I mean, as far as the room divisions, I wouldn't think that would really make any difference. I mean, you got to heat the whole thing. You got so many square foot. You got fifteen hundred square yeah. feet. No, he, you know, he, he can easily ask. Yeah, right. And see what we get for answer. Okay. 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 Yeah, you know, maybe one more step closer. To yep. Okay. Yeah. Okay. What else, Mark? Uh, that's all I have for uh, town administrator. Fire office. department fees. Yeah. This this is not something we need to discuss tonight. I, what I'm doing is passing this out so that um, we can discuss it at the next meeting. And I just want to give you a quick background on this. Uh, Chief Hannum had asked me to take a look at the town of Hatfield's uh, fees. They're significantly higher than ours, and, and I think he feels like our fees are falling behind. And as part of the budget process, I asked all departments to review their fees to make sure that we're uh, bringing in the revenue we need to bring in from these departments. So what you see here is uh, three columns. The uh, Hatfield's current wow. fee, Waitley's current fee, and John's recommendations. So I'm going to ask him to come into the next meeting if you guys have any specific questions on any of these items. Some of them were confusing to me, but he'll be able to make sense of it for you. Uh, this, this is only I'm going to ask you to uh, discuss and vote on increasing some of these fees at the next meeting. Okay. This is a little reading for in preparation for that. But he's only comparing to Hatfield. Is, is there a way of getting more comparison? Yeah, we can get some other towns. I they just, like I guess they seem to have the most others. complete list of. Also, also they're a comparable size yeah. town. Does, does Fort Cog or the our, uh, inspection, Franklin County inspection? They don't do fire inspections. <coughs> or, does, or, does, by town. <coughs> or does Fur Cog keep that information? Not that I know of, but no. we it, it would we can ask some other comparable towns, but um, I think he liked the yeah, and they like Hatfield, Williamsburg, yeah, Sunderland doesn't work, Deerfield doesn't work, and they're just bigger. Conway would be a good one, Ashfield, okay, so okay, good. Um, so we'll come back next meeting with that discussion. Solid waste. Solid waste. Bill O'Bear has resigned, uh, so I'd like you to uh, vote to accept his resignation. So I'm with regret. And uh, Larry Kuttner has, is that, am I pronouncing his last yeah. name right? Larry Kuttner has uh, volunteered to step up and fill his place on that board if you would like to. I nominate um, Larry Kuttner to fill Bill O'Bear's position. Solid waste. Second. Okay, fine. Done. Uh, speaking of committees, it was uh, 
Gary. Uh, I think the last thing was just Lawrence. 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 He, he, he was, was on, on the, the committee. Uh, Has that been, was there an opening on that committee? Or? There's still another opening on that committee to take uh, Gary's seat, if anyone's interested in that position. We, we have two, two openings in the housing committee. Sure, we probably, have openings in cultural council. There are a lot. Of yeah, we probably need to put we together more list. Yeah. We definitely need. We need Dan to step up. <laughs> that lab we get on some of these. Thirty-four E saves us somewhere between five and ten grand. Just a matter of interest. Yeah, it's, it's, it's a great, yeah, great little nut. Um, I, I'm going to make a suggestion in terms of that, and we can noodle it for a while. But we have a lot of openings. My guess is we probably have somewhere between seven and 14 openings in different committees in town. I, I, I think that we should have a segment of town meeting, a recruitment for volunteers to fill, fill, fill the time. I mean, it, it, this town does not run itself and we need people to step up. And I think town meeting is the logical place to start that recruitment process. There are people who obviously care about the town because they're at town meeting. Yep, sounds good. Maybe what we can do is come up with a list of board and committee openings in the meantime. Um, right. Just yeah, try to fill that. Absolutely. Okay, one, one thing that, that may help, and, and I've noticed on, on some other towns' websites, is some description of what the committee does. You know, we did that for the housing committee. We put a mission statement on, what our objectives it's perfect are. Perfect time for that. Yeah, well, I agree. Once we update the website, because I mean, you got conservation commission, ad commission. I don't know exactly what they do, and if people don't know what they do, why, how are you going to volunteer for something you don't know what they do? Well, I, I think another thing we could do is recognize people that are on committees more prominently, like, you know, have a display out there in the hallway prominently. Your, your agricultural commission members are, your CPA people are, yeah, dedicated to providing you with service. And who you know, who's on? Photographers in town that you're aware of. Who? Any photographers in town that you're aware of? We can take oh, have pictures too. Yeah, of course. We have all these yeah. walls in the building, you know. Okay. Okay. That's it. Anything else? Motion to adjourn. Second. All right. Good night and good luck.